good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know, you know that this literally does. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. We got the latest on Kellen Moore. Question is, will we have Kellen Moore some more? And before we get to that, we got to, of course, talk about that great game that we have been looking forward to all season long. You know when I start the clock? You know when I started the clock um, last year? And we had 124 days till the beginning of the season. We all penciled in there. We circled the calendar or, or we got on our smartphone. And we set an alarm because we didn't want to miss the Pro Bowl. Yeah, today is the Pro Bowl. The game that most players kind of say, eh, I really don't want to go. You can go. I'm going to sit this one out because not even the players really want to play. Although, here at least is a good thing. I personally think that the Pro Bowl, they messed up when they changed it from the week after the Super Bowl and moved it from Hawaii to Orlando. Although it was in Arizona one time before the Super Bowl and things. Those were actually pretty good. I actually think it was better for them to be in the Super Bowl city the week before. So that way you could start to build up a little quicker. Roger Goodell, give me a call. We'll talk about it because that's kind of cool because now you, you already have – NFL experience already set up. You then have the Pro Bowl. You make this the whole like 10 day celebration of the league. But you go from Vegas and then to Los Angeles. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. It's kind of like the game. But when you used to go to Hawaii, players would say, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't mind that. now that the season's over taking a week off and going to Hawaii. But not too many of them want to say go to Orlando. I mean, most of them are in Florida anyway. Orlando? At least within Vegas, what happens in Vegas at least can stay in Vegas. So maybe that's a little bit better of an incentive. But we do have the Pro Bowl today. I'm still debating on whether or not I can handle the excitement and be able to live stream. I, I may not be able to live stream it because I, it's just too much. It's too intense. It's too intense to watch. But we'll, we'll probably try and live stream it, I guess. But then again, I could go upstairs and just watch the uh, epoxy dry. Yeah, it's clear. Can't tell it. it. Looks like it's wet even when it's dry. That 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 might actually be kind of exciting. I, I might do that. Anyway, let's get on to Kellen Moore. We want some more, or we want no more. Miami Dolphins, who have McDaniel's from San Francisco, as well as Kellen Moore that they've narrowed it down to those two guys. Now, here's the crazy part on this. McDaniels had a 10-hour interview on Friday and seemed to be the clubhouse leader. What they had hoped was to announce the new coach Saturday night. The last I checked, this is Sunday morning. We don't know if Kellen Moore spent the night in Miami, but I'd have to say, if they have not made a decision yet, then that actually bodes well for Kellen Moore, because that means that the interview must have went on longer than they thought, that he has convinced him that he can uh, get the most out of Tua. And, you know, I heard a rumor that the thing that they were talking about with Tua is quicker passes. Wow. So you're telling me Kellen Moore is suggesting to help Tua, we'll start having quicker passes. You know, with the offensive line being a mess here in Dallas, I want to ask Kellen Moore, why didn't we do that? Because that sounds kind of like the West Coast offense. Because, see, the West Coast offense is predicated on getting the ball out of the hands of the quarterback quickly. See, San Francisco didn't have great offensive lines with Joe Montana. They zone blocked. 
But what they knew is three-step drop, fire the ball to a spot. Receiver's going to be that spot. You give the football to the players in positions to make money, uh, to make plays. Joe Montana didn't have a big arm. You ended up using this shorter passing game as, say, long handoffs. And that's great if Kellen Moore is suggesting this to the Miami Dolphins on a way to help Tua. But I would think with the Cowboys having issues with running the football, that this might have been a solution for us as well. And this is the conundrum that is. I'm almost wondering, in Dallas, you had, I, I'll catch you on the flip side. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know. No, but I'm, I'm almost wondering if the Cowboys are quietly inside, especially Mike McCarthy hoping that Kellen Moore gets that head coaching job with Miami because then Mike McCarthy doesn't have to worry about Kellen Moore and Jerry Jones having this desire for him. And maybe this ends up being the best thing for the Cowboys. We know that Dak Prescott likes Kellen Moore as the offensive coordinator and believes that he is a genius at play calling and, and designing the offense. But I think it's time for the Cowboys offense to have a change of philosophy. And I would think that if Mike McCarthy becomes the play caller, he's going to install more of what he did before. And this could be a change. It may not be completely exactly the West Coast. This may be more what we were promised, which was a West Coast feel to what was already there. So we're still waiting. It's Sunday going on 10 o'clock. No word. I've been looking. I've been all over Twitter, all over the blogosphere, trying to find out anything. But for once, Miami, which is a cesspool, let, let's be clear here, Miami is now the Cleveland South, what the Cleveland Browns used to be. They are the uh, AFC version of the Washington football team. They are a mess. Stephen Ross has been taking has taken one of the great franchises and literally made them just Terrible. I don't know why Kellen Moore would want to go there, but maybe he feels that he's the guy to fix the situation. But in my mind, I'm almost thinking that this would be the best thing for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Miami Dolphin fans are about to jump off a bridge, and there's plenty of bridges to drop off of in Miami because they don't want Kellen Moore. No. We're going to keep watching. I'll be working in the workshop until the Pro Bowl and see what we get here. Let's go through, and we'll get kind of a a little bit of a taste of exactly what was supposed to go on here with Kellen Moore. Talking about the Miami Dolphins, they're interviewing 49ers offensive coordinator Mike McDaniel on Friday. Second interview for him, then Kellen Moore on Saturday. Amidst the league opening up an investigation into possibly throwing games. So what's the latest on the Dolphins as they're forced to multitask here with their head coach and other issues? Yeah, you, you mentioned it, right? It's Mike McDaniel, offensive coordinator of the Niners, who's interviewing maybe even right now with the Miami Dolphins, and that'll go throughout the day. And then Kellen Moore, offensive coordinator of the Cowboys tomorrow. I would anticipate the Dolphins would like to have a decision made on Saturday night, whether all the I's are dotted and T's crossed on the contract for one of these two men to be determined. Uh, it's hard right now to figure out who the leading candidate is there. Um, but I would expect uh, if they are blown away by one of these two men that a decision can very well come on Saturday evening. I'll tell you this, you know, both guys need to take, need to be asking as many questions, if not more, of the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are asking of them in this second round of interviews based off of the information that Brian Flores and his lawsuit is alleging. Very serious allegations, allegations that um, could really disrupt a football operation in terms of ownership, in terms of draft picks and resources. So uh, those I would have to imagine while they are certainly being interviewed, uh, you know, they're in really good situations. Mike McDaniel was just the offensive coordinator of an NFC title team. Kellen Moore is going to have his pick of a head coaching opportunity. If it's not this year, it will certainly uh, probably be next year, maybe even the Dallas Cowboys. And so uh, (laughs) neither one of these men should feel it necessary to jump at a Miami Dolphins situation that they may realize isn't as good as it may have been a week ago.
Yeah, JJ, I mean, we can't ignore the situation with the Dolphins and their former head coach, Brian Flores. Like Hugh Jackson came out this week saying he was asked to throw games. Uh, Commander's owner Dan Snyder is facing more misconduct allegations. That's on top of the accusations in the lawsuit involving racism by Flores. JJ, what is the latest fallout from all of this stuff that came out this week? You know, I, I can tell you the NFL is not pleased that in uh, a few days they're going to have a Super Bowl, right? Eight or nine days. And the Super Bowl is like number three or four of what we are discussing right now mm -hmm. around the league. It's not the Bengals and the Rams. It's a, a lawsuit alleging very serious allegations of, about racism, about competitive integrity of the game. Obviously, we have heard from the Denver Broncos and from John Elway. We've heard from the New York Giants. We've heard from Stephen Ross and the Miami Dolphins, all by way of statements. And, you know, those statements are all saying that they have done nothing wrong and they have stated their claims uh, against Brian Flores and, and refuting those items. But still, this is what we're talking about in the lead up, in the build up to the Super Bowl. Roger Goodell has his annual Super Bowl press conference in the middle of next week. That's There's going to be, be fun. plenty of questions about Flores, about those teams involved uh, in the lawsuit as defendants. There's going to be plenty of questions about the, the new findings here that were just uncovered by the House Oversight Committee on the Washington football team. And that Dan Snyder apparently has the ability to uh, to veto whether the report is ultimately going to be released. You know, it wasn't that long ago, we were all under the assumption that there was no written report. Now there is one and Dan Snyder has the control over it if it ultimately gets released. So a number of questions and issues surrounding the NFL as you head into a Super Bowl, usually a joyous, a ceremonious time um, not really where the league wants to be as it stands right now. Yeah, it could be an historic Super Bowl week in terms of the NFL and not in a good way. He's senior NFL insider Jonathan Jones, latest NFL insider call. -up. Yeah, you know, I, I find it kind of crazy that the NFL is basically saying, oh, we can't release the report that we did on Dan Snyder without his permission. I don't remember them saying that about the report that they did on Zeke Elliott, that they couldn't release that without permission from Zeke Elliott. I just don't think that that happened. But, you know, I look at Washington with the name change and the whole situation with all that's going on here. And then you look at Miami and you hear these things. This whole thing is definitely a black eye for the NFL. And the NFL needs to do something, something drastic to write this to change the narrative. I'm sorry, to me, when I keep hearing about offering your coach to tank a game for draft position. I know that sounds innocent enough, but you know, how far is it to say we want you to tank a game because we can make billions of dollars in betting? It's not a good situation. And so let's end this morning's report with my favorite of all time gridiron reports. This is the best. Did I not turn the sound on? Hold on. Let, Stop the leaks! Let's get back to this phone season. Oh, no. Something stinks at the Washington football team. Hurry! Stop the leaks! Oh, Mr. Snyder, why is the ground toxic waste? I am suing you for raising your voice. Look, your dump is too toxic. You're right. We need to make serious changes. For real. Introducing the Commander Hawk Trash Ballad! Oi, oi, pew, 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 trash it down with still! Go Commander Hawk Trash Ballad! The big style cheerleaders are all male because women won't come near us. So it's still a dump. No one will fall. Whoa, Whoa look, look at, at these unis! Okay, but did you actually clean it. the inside of the dump? Based on the parts of the dump, I was shown. Kind of. You can't criticize us because we honored Sean Taylor with a commemorative trash compact. Please buy merch. Ryder, it's $100 to park in the trash ballast. Of course, sorry, Dan. It's King Snyder, you peasant. We're also the first garbage dump to honor the troops. I'm President Joe Biden, and this is what will unite us. Wait, I think the dump is falling apart. Oh, look, the Bengals won. It's clear there's only one thing to do. Build them a dump in Northern Virginia. Obviously, I was hoping for the Red Wolves trash den, but I could get used to this. Maybe now everyone will shut up about the name, and we can focus on all the promising trash in the draft. Yeah, I just hate Dan Snyder. Oh, hello, I'd like to give your organization all my time and money. How quickly you abandoned me! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. The Washington Commanders! All right, y'all. 
Let me get some work done. We got five hours until the Pro Bowl. Let's see if I can get some more of these pieces cut in the workshop. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Burrow. Our coach here, as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Burrow Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is...